Alright, what is up everyone? So the Nintendo Direct happened and we actually got Splatoon information from this Direct. And normally when I, actually the few times that I did do this, what I would do before is I would watch back the video and write down some things and then I would record commentary over it and then would take screenshots of important things and then put that all in and just edit it all together with the video playing. But instead, this time I decided to instead watch the video while I record and sort of just pause the YouTube video here as key parts come up. Makes it a lot easier to edit, just makes it a lot simpler to work with. And I can just sort of react to things that are happening. Expect a lot of pauses because I'm going to be, you know, doing that obviously for things that are important that I should point out or things that I noticed that maybe some other people didn't or some people would be expecting me to point out. So I guess we might as well just get started with this right away. So let's go ahead and start it. Inkopolis News Bulletin. It's update time. This April, so yes, we're skipping all the way to version 3.0. This actually, uh, it says it states it's coming late April. So what I'm thinking of is we're probably not going to get something substantial this month. They didn't announce when the the next version would be coming after the previous patch, and when they when they announce patch notes, they usually say when the next update is coming, and they didn't do that this time. We do, however, know that there's going to be an update on the 16th, which is supposed to be addressing a glitch on Arowana Mall, so that's going to be happening. We don't know if anything other than fixing the glitch is going to happen that update, but so far we're thinking that 3.0 being in late April is the next update we're actually going to get that's going to address things like balancing or stages or whatever and the update on the 16th is probably just going to be for the arowana glitch here's a brief and briny taste of what's to come 100 so a lot of this gear is whoop, a lot of this gear is in fact returning stuff like this and then a lot of it is very interesting looking stuff we got some remodels of already existing gear. Uh, again, returning stuff. Some interesting looking ones. Not really too much like real important things that I want to say about the gear. There is one piece of gear that I'm excited that's returning. Uh, I know someone who's excited for the gas mask. Nice Just in time uh, for spring. Oh, actually, since we spring. passed by it, because this is going pretty fast. Just in Time. So the Octo T is coming back. This was actually one of the, uh, I think this was the level 40 bonus in Splatoon 1. Originally had Haunt. This, this is something a lot of people, especially like myself, I loved wearing this in the first game. It actually looks really nice and it's coming back so that'll be cool to finally have that. Hopefully when uh, it gets into Splatnet, hopefully it has something uh, decent pretty soon. I don't have to wait forever for it to have a good ability that I want. Oh, that was it. <laughs> they the the Squid Nordic is actually something I've been looking forward to. It was one of my favorite pieces of gear in the first game. Sorry about this. I'm not gonna be going doing this all the time when uh, trying to freeze frame like this. But this was one of my favorite pieces of gear in the first game, and I'm hoping that I can find it with swim speed pretty soon. And then this jacket actually looks pretty nice. Maybe if it had like. I don't know. It, I think it just looks really nice, honestly. That's just my opinion, though. Plus, more stages. Other than that, the gear isn't Piranha too much. Pit. Okay, so first off, we know that Piranha Pit is returning. This is probably one of the more mixed maps from the first game. A lot of people had very uh, mixed feelings on whether or not this was a good map. We can see that there's already some changes made here with like these it conveyor belts. They used to be closer to each other and now they are at a distance. And in fact there's an overhead screenshot that I might provide later that there it, we can see the distance between them. The starting area here is also different. And then um, you can't see it here but in the overhead shot the far ends of Piranha Pit have also been made a lot smaller. So it, it looks like they're trying to fix some of the problems with these conveyor belts being too close to these platforms down here and making it easy to camp people there. And then the fact that conveyors are pretty close together made it so you could just jump between them. So they're fixing that. And then Camp Triggerfish, one of the the favorites of the first game is coming back. 
and just from here you can't really see too much however you can see it there's an ink rail right here and that that ink rail is going to go to the other side so you can actually access the other side of the map without having to go all the way around here and the, and then the new the newest map here we can't see too much of it there isn't even as far as I'm aware an overhead shot of this map so we're gonna have to just go with this we can see there's an ink rail here going from this uh, this part right here to over here I don't know where in relation to any part of the map any of this is at so I can't really provide any information about place. that Wahoo world. And what? now this X is here. Here. this is something that a lot of people are very mixed on they're adding another rank to the game and it feels like this is probably to address the fact that a lot of people are complaining that S plus has been flooded and it's just too easy to get to S plus they're adding a new rank that's higher than S plus but we don't know what the conditions to get to S plus or to rank X rather is people originally thought that like there was a bunch of confusion as to you had to be S plus 50 but rank as X we can see in rank. this video Even that's not the case now before I go on talking about the rank X I actually want to take a moment here and point out some changes that are actually worth noting at this part so this is going to be talking about a what I guess what would have been spoilers back back when the the game launched we had some data miners that were able to provide us with the the future weapons so going into this a lot of people myself included knew what the sub and specials of weapons that were coming out were going to be before they were released and we had a couple of instances where those have changed and the final version of a weapon is actually different from the data mining now that's probably that stems from the fact that the data mining is old and based off one of the launch versions of the game and I want to say here because there is a change from the data mining so this isn't really spoilers because it's changed but originally here the custom dually squelchers was originally going to have ink armor now it has stingray that's something important to note so we already know that this weapon has changed I'm not gonna say it's sub in case people do want to avoid spoilers but we know that these uh, the ink armor has been swapped with stingray and then here the next umbrella we were in the data mining it spoke it showed that it was a splat bomb rush and here we can see that it is indeed a splat bomb rush still so it kept it special then down here the h3 nozzle nose D it's our ar it had armor in the data mine and we can see here that it still has ink armor so these haven't changed S plus more details are coming and then here this is what I was talking about where people were pointing out it's like oh you don't need to be s plus 50 to get to rank X this guy went from s plus 9 or whatever to rank X now what a lot of people are curious about is what this calculating is it seems to me at least in my my my, my guess is that you play 10 matches and then it puts you in sort of a like a, a power level for rank X so in the same way you would get a power level in league matches that you would get a power level for rank X and this would be how the game would sort of keep people of differing skill levels away from each other where when a lot of people at launch thought that the numbers for S plus would do that but instead it was just climbing up the same number and you were just in the same pool of people so this might be that you might be getting a power level for rank X and then you will play with people that are in the same power level as you we don't know if that's the case they haven't announced anything other than this so they do say that more is going to come and this update is supposed to be pretty soon so we'll be seeing what happens with that soon. Once you meet certain conditions, and then here I don't really care too much about the Cali being here in single player I don't really care too much for the single the player anyway okay so this is something important to show off gonna back up here a little bit so here we get another look at Camp Triggerfish we can see over here this little floodgate in Splatoon 1 there was two floodgates one closer to here and then one over here we can see there's only one now it's been reduced to a single one and you can't see too much up here but in an overhead shot that I will show later you can actually see that this area has been made much larger and it used to be very narrow in the first game which made it very easy to camp people now there's a big open area up there. The world there. of Splatoon 2 continues to evolve, so don't miss out. Now here's an interesting thing to note. 
we sh it shows right there the Clash Blaster throwing a burst bomb. This is another change from the data mining, as originally the Clash Blaster Neo was going to have Sprinkler as its sub. Now they just showed that it has burst bomb, and in fact that's pretty scary. That Clash, giving Clash burst bomb is actually probably going to be very dangerous, as the weapon already has a very annoying kill time and is very good at poking, and now it can basically trap people in its ink to follow up the poking. So we'll definitely see what comes of that, but I imagine it's going to get pretty nasty pretty quick. Now a word from the Squid Research Lab. Check out their latest video. Now this, this is something people have been looking forward to for a while. And when this first happened, I didn't know really what was going to be happening here. Even though, like, I don't even really know what to say about this intro to this trailer. It's definitely interesting, and I'm not quite sure what what's supposed to be happening here. Then again, some people would probably say I'm uncultured and don't know like the reference that's probably being made here, but you know, that that's just me. I don't quite understand it. The music is pretty cool though. I like this track. It's definitely interesting. The octolings look interesting as well. And then one thing people have noted here is this is using or this inkling here is wearing the Splatoon 1 hero armor. So people are assuming that this is supposed to be Agent 3 from Splatoon 1 single player. So that's uh, that's an interesting thing to point out. So yeah, this this single player map like that that they showed is definitely something odd and very different from the original single player. Other than that, it seems more of like very similar gameplay. A lot, but it looks like it's utilizing more of the specials, and there's actually more weapons in the single player, as we could see there. That the the Clash Blaster, which originally was in the original single player, now there's probably going to be utilizing more main weapons. And then here is sort of where they like they basically show you like oh yeah the the octolings will be fully playable, and this was this was like a mind blown moment for a lot of people. This is something that people have been asking for since the first game and they're finally giving it to people. Hello. So yeah, I do want to say, however, that the Octoling stuff has been known about for a little bit. People were able to data mine Splatoon 2, as I mentioned earlier, that people were able to find the weapons kits and stuff. People actually back, I guess, earlier in the launch, people were data mining and found evidence of the Octolings and those Octoling models that were used for the male and female one. People had found that already, and so I had kind of already known that those player models existed. And in fact, in Splatoon 1, there were actually Octoling player models, and that was the basis for a hack called Octohacks that came out later, where you could swap the character models. However, what's different about these ones and the ones in Splatoon 1 is Splatoon 1, the character models were used for single player. The Octolings you played against in single player were technically being classified as normal human players in the game, but that was just an oversight. Here, they're actually completely separate from the characters and the ones that were data mined were coupled with the male and ink the male and female inkling characters that you choose as being any of the game which made people uh, at that time consider that maybe playable octolings were in fact a going to become a reality oh cool. squid research lab here so how was it 
You just got a sneak peek at the first paid downloadable content for Splatoon. And there, they say it's paid. So this is going to be, in fact, a paid DLC, and probably by the point that uh, the time this video goes up, many of you have already paid for it. So that's that's interesting. And they also say it first, so there's a chance that we might have more of it later down the road. Very curious to see what else they end up doing with this. If they like, what what would they do after this? I was already like. The idea of Clan Blitz itself, like adding another mode, was something I didn't even expect, and I couldn't even think of another mode they could have made. And here they come up with a, you know, they give people what they wanted, finally, they gave them the playable Octolings, and they gave them a story mode expansion. But other than that, I can't really think of too much they could actually get away with asking for people to pay for. So we'll have to see what happens in the future. Two, the hefty new single player mode, Octo Expansion. You'll play as the new character, Agent 8, who looks And the like Agent Octoling. 8 name is a play on the fact that Octo means 8, for those that may or may not know. Without her memories. Looks like some kind of shady underground test facility. In this massive subterranean world... So, this map system... I don't... I don't understand why this sort of map system wasn't used the game in the first place this is actually pretty cool looking though I guess maybe they just wanted to use this sort of aesthetic as it says it's a subway map so it's probably you know designed for this aesthetic but I I would have think in my opinion I would have liked to have this kind of like design for the original single player map something that looked you know interesting like this instead of the the static images we ended up with World, there are 80 of these test facilities connected by a subway You'll depart from the station with purpose. A variety of missions await Agent 8 and her talents. Expect new stories to unfold, shedding new light on beloved characters. You may think you know everything about the world of Splatoon, but these waters run deep, and so does the lore. Escape from these twisted depths, and you'll be able to join multiplayer matches as an Octoling. We hope you enjoy this fresh perspective. So there we actually got a look at the, the male Octolink, and I really don't like this hairstyle. This looks pretty ridiculous. Hopefully they have more choices for stuff. I I wholeheartedly expect Octolings to overtake the Inglings in terms of player base when this actually comes out. I'd probably it'll probably be rare to see someone still playing as an Inkling by the time that this comes out. Perspective. Since Octa means 8 in Latin, that means 2018 is the year of the Octoling. And here he's making another silly stance like he did in the original reveal. So yeah, it'll be available in summer is when the actual DLC goes up. And for those of you that might not have the money and can't purchase this DLC right now and are wondering what the gear has. The headphones here are Ink Recovery and the shirt is Ink Saver Main and they're both Cuddle, uh, Cuddle Gear brand rather and that means that they don't favor any specific ability. For advanced purchase in Nintendo eShop. With this purchase Splatoon 2 owners will immediately receive Octo themed in-game gear. Yeah so you'll get it immediately today. upon purchase and that that's pretty much where it ends. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that comes out of this. There we got the the new maps, I guess one new map in reality, two being returning. We have a full new campaign and finally people will have the playable octolings they've been asking for for quite some time. It is definitely really cool to see them finally delivering on this stuff that people have been asking for for the longest time. And I'm excited to see it. I'm more excited for the gear and the maps. Personally, I don't really care too much to play as an Octoling. I probably won't even do it. So, I don't... Uh, for me, that it's not for me, honestly. Like, that part, it's not for me. There's a lot of people I know that would much like to play as an Octoling. And there's probably quite a few of you that would do that in a heartbeat. But, yeah, I'm just more so excited for the new maps and the weapon changes and the weapons and the gear. So... Yeah, that's pretty much it. There's just not too much else from this that we can go off of. Again, we don't have any patch notes, so there isn't too much else that we can go over. 
In fact, now I'm actually going to jump to some overhead shots of Piranha Pit and Camp Triggerfish that we have from uh, somewhere. I don't remember where. Okay, so here we have an overhead shot of Piranha Pit. And it looks like it's actually from the Nintendo Japan site. So here we get a nice, good look at Piranha Pit from above. So down here we can see the spawn area, and they made this ramp area much bigger. And you can actually see there is a way to enter down from this, this sort of safer path down here, or you can go up to what was originally the snipe area back in Splatoon 1. Then you can see how far away the conveyor, bird, uh, conveyor belts rather were. Pardon the uh, mistake there. The conveyor belts actually used to be really close to this bottom platform, making it easy to camp people that were trying to jump down from here. This area over here is more or less the same, except here they have like a wall. So this ramp doesn't go as high, but there's now a wall you can hide behind. There's actually no like lower route here that you used to be able to fall under to get onto this conveyor belt safely. And then as you can see here, these sort of areas have been made significantly smaller. But aside from all that, the map pretty much looks identical to what it used to, you know, aside from the changes, obviously. The conveyor belts, I feel like, actually make quite a bit of a change. It's actually a bigger change than I feel like. A lot of people probably don't care too much, and a lot of people might not realize how difficult it was to deal with these conveyor belts and how chargers could camp this or dynamos could camp it and make it hard to even enter from one of the, you know, possible three routes and then even then these areas over here were very easy to camp as well making it to where only this far left path was only a real safe place to go and that was if no one was watching that so I'm interested in playing this version of Piranha Pit and I'm excited to see it so here we have the Camp Triggerfish one and here immediately you can see what I was talking about in the the direct video where we only have one of the gates where the first game had two and then over here we can see how much more open this area is and it's no longer condensed like it used to be now there's a lot more space and you can freely move along here we can also see very briefly and not as not really all that well but we can see the the incline and it looks like it just goes over into this area just over here and then over here past the enemy's wall or your teammates wall you can see another incline that brings you all the way over to this spot so there's more than one incline on this map. Other than that, the rest of it looks pretty much the same, though we can see from this, sh this angle here that this spot way in the back here actually goes out much further than it used to. But other than that, Camp Triggerfish looks about the same, and I'm actually quite fine with that. Tr Camp Triggerfish was one of my favorite maps from the first game, so I'm excited to play this. And that's pretty much it. There really isn't anything else to go off of. I'm more or less excited for it. I'm more or less excited for the 3.0. I want to see if the inclusion of a new rank actually changes anything and will make the rank system any more valuable and bring actual value into playing solo again or am I or if I'm just gonna like stop playing solo again. But I want to know what everyone here is excited for most so feel free to say below what you're looking forward to and yeah that's pretty much it. So I want to thank everyone for watching and I will see you all next time.